This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and I'm gonna walk around and check different trees and look at everything and talk about a little bit about uh, the air we breathe and how polluted it is. It's kind of depressing when you think about it. I was watching a video this morning on um, biogenic VOCs and they're in the atmosphere and how they react with uh, human-made gases from like power plants and stuff, how they break down, they change, form different gases, molecule chains. So that's what it all comes back to. We're all made up of molecules that are constantly moving throughout the system. Kind of, we're all connected. We're one plants, animals, animal uh, people. We're all exchanging nutrients. And I was like, I wonder what these microplastics how those molecules um, react in the atmosphere. And so I had to look, I wish I hadn't, but I had to look and see that, yeah, plastic molecules are in the air that we're breathing now. And the vinyl chloride is the majority of the plastics and uh, they, I guess, cause li liver cancer and a bunch do a bunch of other damage to your like brain and stuff. So we're breathing them every day now. So rather than like nutrients and biogenic VOCs and air, clean air, we're breathing our pollutants. It's pretty scary. So I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So I, I decided to see the, you know, look up, do a little looking on what the effects, how those plastics break down and what's their carcinogenic um, capabilities inside our system. And I guess they, when we breathe them in and our liver has to expel them, they can be pro-mutational, so they're able to uh, generate mut mutations in your cells. They've done some studies on this, and the studies found that if you, the enzymes, or what is it? It's the the uh, nitrogen with the protein, so the amine, the, the simple nitrogen chain, uh, a nitrogen with a protein molecule. That's what's able to break down the vinyl chloride, which is this known carcinogen that everyone's breathing now in our air. I guess it's worse around cities and downwind of those cities, of course, would be horrible. And, um, but that's very interesting because that's what, when you, you know, grow organic and you use organic fertilizers, they can, they have the nitrogen bonded with the, the, uh, protein, the carbon molecule. <clears throat> And so if you're eating foods that are, you know, grown industrially, you're 
body has a higher chance of not being able to break down the pollutant that you are, we're now breathing in our air, the vinyl chloride molecules. Pretty scary. Well, I guess that's probably why everyone has fatty liver disease. Part of the reason that and all the other pollutants they're ingesting with their food. I guess Europe is like gonna trying to get 20% of their farms to be organic. The EU with soon and we're like totally against organic here in Florida, the growers, the, the conventional growers, the, you know, the, the growers that can make a difference in our health. It's not ready yet. Oh, I love this jackfruit, I love jackfruit. I love all the trees, actually. So yeah, I made a tea yesterday of the sorrel and the, some other stuff, the Jamaican sorrel. But it gives it a nice tasty kick. I'm so glad that I live on the east coast of Florida and not in the big city, because all this pollutants, pollution that's like everywhere, it's permeated everything now. It's kind of scary. I can smell this raw sapote. It looks like that one's changing color. I picked one of my delightful egg fruits because I wanted to see if I could pick it slightly, just when it just starts changing and see if it would ripen up. Because it's all a learning experience for me, and that's the beauty of planting your own grove and dealing with it as it grows. I really like uh, sapodillas. Looks like we're going to have a whole bunch of them this year. Got a lot of sapodilla trees. Okay. Let's see what I'm looking at over here. Let's climb up. I don't know. The more I look, the more depressing the information is. I wish I wasn't so curious to what's going on. Mangas really are like looking good. So I don't know. I mean, I had some tea made from the mango leaves also, and I, I don't know if do those uh, pollutant molecules from the systemic fungicides that they use to to you know start your nursery grown trees, mangoes, do those stay in the plant? Because they're molecule pollutants that grow inside the plant. So I imagine that, I don't know, can the tree expel them? Probably, huh? If it's healthy. So it kind of grosses me out to think I'm like drinking tea from something that probably had a systemic fungicide given to it at the nursery at one point in its life. Most of our trees have been here a while now, so um, I don't know, maybe I have to just stick to seed grown trees. Definitely gonna do a tea of a seed grown tea, a mango tree. And I'm also gonna do a tea of the sugar apple, seed grown trees, and spray that on my, and around my uh, nursery grown sugar apple trees that get black spot. And um, 
That just might be enough. So the leaves of the mango, the seed-grown mango, probably would uh, provide something to the nursery-grown mango tree, the tea, foliar spray. When you look at it, it just molecules and molec or molecules, organic molecules and molecule pollution, pollu pollutants, you know, the stuff that we're do causing, we're making. Humans cause pollution. We don't have to. Not, in, not what, how we're doing it now. Total uh, earth destroying pollution. going to head back to this citrus back here. Yep, I had to do a little rant today. I just... Those plas black plastic pots, I don't know. They just scare me. All that plastic scares me. And I see now that I'm breathing it, that we probably should be scared. Vinyl chloride is not a good thing to breathe. And that's what we're doing. Okay, let me look at this cashew tree. Look at this cashew tree, it looks so healthy. I mean, it's really gotten big. And uh, I love cashew fruit. I started all the, the seeds that I've collected from this fruit fruiting tree. It really is like, I can get under it now. It's a big tree, it's getting big. I love it. Never been watered, never given any extra love. Nursery started tree. I don't see any flowers on it. Sure cranked out fruit all summer long, like May to this month, I believe. A couple weeks ago, I did pick some fruit off of it, the last fruit. Probably the cold temperatures triggering it not to bloom now. Probably having all this cover on everything is probably good for the, keeping the microplastics. So this, this is a seed grown citrus tree that um, it flowered in June or July. I think maybe July it flowered. So the fruit probably has six months to go or so. Or five, four months, five months. So it's gonna ripen in when citrus usually is not ripe here in Florida. This is one of our own trees uh, from our beach house tree and I'm gonna make some it's a lemon tree uh, I'm gonna make some juice from it some tea 
I can see just a couple leaves that have leaf miner. Looks like one or two leaves on the tree. So that tree's been in the ground for three years and it's coming up. So flowered at two years and fruited. The fruit was ripe on its third, gonna be its third year. Three year old tree. It's another citrus. Another, nothing looks like it needs water. Uh, we're going through a, like what is considered a Florida drought right now. So in order for uh, us to process the uh, vinyl chloride we're breathing, the plastic in the air, because that's where it's at, we have to probably consume organic food in order to get the proteins you need, the protein molecule. The amine. Carbon molecule. Leeches are uh, definitely looking really good this year. Our citrus is very healthy. Really sure why how they destroyed the citrus industry with their pollution obviously oh yeah you can you can make good healthy food with pollutants I mean I need to look and see if systemic fungicides stay inside the plant They would have to probably go to the go to the um, bark would be my guess, and then when the bark sloughs off, maybe that's how they get degraded further. This whole molecular biology thing is so fascinating to me. This is a katuk. So I guess when it rains, the microplastics rain down onto the onto your property. There's really no getting around it. They move through the entire world. I don't know. You can clean them up out of the ocean, but you got to worry about the stuff you don't see. at some of these little cashews since I was talking about them. Very lush and beautiful here in Florida. It's amazing. We haven't, there was no need to pretty much destroy Florida with all these chemicals. when it's obvious that Florida natural growing of tropical fruit trees is exceptionally easy. I and mean, look at these cashews. Now, mind you, these are just planted seeds right in the ground. 
They look good. I guess they're gonna get really big. So that's what we want with our trees. Hopefully the plants will be able to clean up all this pollution and the microbes. These citron uh, trees are quite beautiful. And the uh, citron fruit is so expensive, seed grown trees. All our citrus are seed grown. I guess I could look at my greens over here and see how they're growing. Coming up okay. If we'd got some rain, we'd be doing really good, but I see some uh, fennel coming up and some other stuff. More stuff down here. I see my cilantro, yes. I need to throw some more seeds on that. This side's a little bit better. Came up fairly, fairly well. Normally, if I had a bigger garden, I'd be already shearing these little tiny ones with my scissors and eating them. But I don't have that many patches going. I need to start some more patches of vegetables so that I can do that. Because I like them when they're really young. The mushrooms are growing right up in the... Okay. We're gonna have vegetables next week maybe a little bit so excited don't have to water anything makes it so easy I have a bunch of not a bunch but all the known varieties that people collect are these mulberries and this mulberry is the only one that I really like. It has the big giant leaves on it and it's got fruit that makes your hands stained and the fruit is very tasty. And I know it fruits in the winter, so it just seems, I don't know what type it is, but I have those other ones. I think this is the one that came from Adam. They're just hideous trees. This one's a pretty tree, this particular one. I like the, the mulberries that stain your hands and your tongue, personally. The air smells so good here. Here's a, we have a couple of these custard apple trees and we grow them just like, I grow them just like everything else. But this one finally seems happier now that it has some shade. It always seemed to like struggle. But I don't see no fruit on it. I'm not sure what color their flavor is, pink or white or whatever this custard apple is. I think I have one more <clears throat> seed grown custard apple. This is uh, Inga, Inga Cinnamonii. And 
This tree is the most cold sensitive Inga we have. It's got the biggest leaves and I wonder what the leaves are like for tea. They smell different. So I wonder if you take uh, the cold sensitive Ingas and boil, make a tea and spray it on the, or the non, not as cold sensitive Ingas, if you spray it on the on the uh, cold sensitive tree, if it would help. Surely it would do something. Help it be, be more cold sensitive. It can't just be a biological thing. Could be, but um, all those molecules you get from the, the leaf teas, they all do stuff. It's all different. Um, processes constantly exchanging with each other. That's what's going on in the world. Now we're exchanging our molecules and getting pollutants in them. Ugh, so depressing. <laughs> oh yeah, we got some ginger happening. It's looking good here. This is the culinary ginger, the officinalis. Oh yeah, it smells good. This is a bread nut, the Mayan bread nut. Or no, this is the oil, the, the, the nut they use, make oil out of the tree. That's what that is. I think I killed the Mayan bread nuts. They were a gift. Well, I didn't kill them, Some, something else did. I think it was the cold that got it. That's the oil one, that's right. That was a gift from a friend of mine that grows everything from seed. It's a freak plant hoarder with millions of plastic pots. It gives me anxiety <clears throat> thinking about it. And for obvious re good reasons now. Sometimes it's best not to know anything, I guess. <laughs> Certainly the case. I thought this was some sort of bread nut here. A different type. Not the man one, but a different one. But maybe I'm wrong. Kind of looks like a Garcinia. Who knows? I will know when it fruits. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I hope you have a wonderful day.